Well, I just want to thank you again today for coming on the show. Um, I kind of need to do a little bit of an introduction, so I just want to say- We do need to do that. We kind of jumped into yeah, the- Yeah, that's topic. okay. I, I can kind of cut things and make it magical how it should be, but- Yeah, you can rearrange it a little. Sorry about getting ahead of the game there. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, I just want to say welcome back, everyone, to the show, Indigo Angel. Come on into this dimension. And I'm so happy uh, to finally get back together with Gene Decode. It's been a little while since we've done a show together, but- uh, we're already diving right into the current events and the grids and the stargates that are activating and all of the cosmic galactic warfare that's taking place on Earth. And so you have such incredible insight. I know you're keeping up on all of the current events and then with all of your deep introspection that you have. So thanks so much for coming back on the show today, Jean. How, how just how are you in general? How's life? And <laughs> Yeah. Chaos, chaos, totally chaos. You know, but you know, you you do what you need to do, and you just keep on going. So that's what we do. That is what we do, right? We have to sometimes recover from the ups and downs and the dissension cycles, and just where the planet's at with all of this mess. And you know, it affects all of us, and so you know. And then there's we are in the time of the change, which I played on deep dives. A really good set of videos uh, by uh, Blade Divide. 144,000 with a Shalomit Xi Yi talking about the separation where we're a new earth is forming. It's a natural separation. The Shaolin goes into it. And then um, from there, Divide explains how to weather this storm of surrounding yourself with, you know, if you're wanting to be in service and help humanity and not just about yourself to surround yourself with loving and kind and good people or you can surround yourself with a whole bunch of haters <laughs> and be part of the other side of the coin where you're attacking people to glorify yourself and you're pointing fingers at everybody and nothing is your fault everybody is these people's fault you know it's a lot what we see with the globalist neocon projection and we see that all now which is essentially the anunnaki uh, alpha draco and zeta reticuli projection that they're just picking up and reiterating because they want to rule the world and rule the earth and or rule the solar system thereby the galaxy thereby the universe <laughs> it's like they're they have an endless hunger let's put it that way because they don't have any way to solve its hunger it's like you're thirsty and you're drinking salt water that's not going to make you less thirsty. It's going to make it worse. The only way to quench your thirst is in service to others, in service to the one and only God of all creation. Then you're filled with the light of the Holy Spirit, and you have no thirst. You're filled with the love of God. The one God of all creation is love, and you have no thirst at all, and you're satiated. But filling it with, you know, attacking others and this that feeds on itself like a vicious cycle and it gets worse and worse and then you start seeing that nothing is your fault that it's always somebody else's fault when you don't look within and go into the inner voyage of who you are what makes you so beautiful and unique that you can offer the world to help others and thereby help yourself and fill with the light of the holy spirit you don't have that. You don't have this need for others to know who you are. In fact, you really don't want them to know who you are because it's not about you. It's about what you can do to help others. And then that energy is what, at a higher level, like Trump, it becomes, a, David Wilcock talk, calls it executive function, which is exactly what it is where others love what you're doing, you're helping other people, you're there for your country or your nation or your culture, instead of destroying other cultures like we see Netanyahu, who is actually a Zionist, which is not Hebrew and not, not Jewish, not Hebrew, it is this same invasion that came to earth a long time ago uh, that created the 13 bloodlines of Cain and all of this mess and put down these dark apens and all of this stuff that we see, it's all interconnected. It's just a little hard for the average person to wrap their mind around the yeah, interconnection well, level I wanna, of it. I, I kind of want to go into that direction a little bit because, you know, we talk about what's going on, like it's going on politically, culturally, society, environmentally, atmospherically. 
But then there's this deeper quantum uh, warfare that I think is going on, this holographic warfare where it also plays out in the etheric and it plays out in the astral and it plays out in the oryx body of the planet. And this kind of brings me to pivot it to those planetary modification weapons technology because this Draco reptilian race is so advanced, right? They've been on the planet for a long time, hooking the planet up to all of this installation of stuff in which they can control that 33 to 44 degree parallel. They can control the sun. They can control the modification and manipulation of our pole. Um, and I think they do actually have control over pole flip. Or what, you know, like they they have technologies, they have laser beams down in Antarctica, they have directed energy weapons, they have sky heaters. I mean, how extensive do you see this planetary weapons modification system truly being? And um, And then let's talk about after that, what are some spiritual defense systems we do have on the planet that can also combat the level of darkness and evil that's going on on the planet? Um, Dr. Stephen Greer and one of his whistleblowers worked at the um, neutron, or sorry, not neutron. Um, yeah, my mind goes blank. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, neutrino. I knew it started with a damn neutrino weapon that is in Antarctic, and that ties to this whole system. It's at a pivotal point that can cross into the Giza plateau and these whole apen systems so yeah. they can hijack that now maybe we should just explain for everyone watching because i don't think everyone watching knows what an apen system is so um me and you know because we've studied a lot of the voyagers work and it's the atlantean pylon implant network but they have lpin as well where they have a lemurian pylon implant network and what does the network ultimately mean it's just stringing together like mental and energetic control systems and frequency fences that basically can alter reality and persuade the human race into negative agendas essentially so when you create something, whether it's kind of natural or it's built like the giant pyramids of Giza, the ones in China, the one in um, set in Antarctica that are the largest on Earth, they're sticking above a mile high plat uh, plate of ice and they're still visible. That's a huge set of pyramids. Then you have underneath the Earth in the the best way would be to look at the huge crystal caves in Mexico, which is an apen, where you've got these crystals that are human beings look small next to them. And so these natural crystal systems, sound kind of natural, <laughs> they're kind of engineered to be there, but it's just like people underestimate the power of crystal structures, but yet it's what runs everything. If you look what's running computers, it's little tiny crystal systems. You look at what's powering your watch and you look at what's powering your car. You're looking at actually liquid crystal displays or solid silicon crystal displays or other types of crystals that are impregnated by rare earths and things like that. So all of this crystal system is how you can control the electrogravitic uh, and magnetic fields of a planet or a solar system or a galaxy as they rotate around. First, they rotate around their inner sun, which is a cold nuclear, low energy nuclear reaction sun inside the center of the Earth. Then that goes to the energy that is creating the electromagnetic field of the Earth, which is both a bar magnet and a figure eight overlaid on itself. So it interconnects, the figure eight interconnects the other bar magnet at certain degrees of latitude that then create the ley lines on Earth. And then you have moving ley lines that come out of the equator of north and south are positive and negative electromagnetic fields and then the opposites attract so you have one ley line moving towards the arctic which would be the arctic is the negative pole of the earth because the positive pole of the compass or the south pole points towards the arctic so you have the 
positive lines coming out of the equator moving up and you have the negative lines moving down towards the North Pole, which is Antarctica. And that's when they come out is what created what is created what we call St. Elmo's fire, which is like you take your hands in a tub of water and pull them apart, you get eddies or ball lightning in the case of an electromagnetic field. Even the old sailing ships used to rig their masts in when they crossed the equator because they would all light up and you could burn your mast. And on submarines and ships, they lower all the radar antennas and all of that. On one of my submarines, we were going from the Philippines to Singapore crossing the equator and they didn't lower the radar mass. And I got chased down the bridge hatch from the bridge to the control room by a ball lightning that fell off the radar mass and followed me down. And then I jumped out of the way and it went, having formed on the radar mass, it created a circuit. It went to the radar stack where you know all the electronics in are and just blew it to pieces and they had to rebuild it from scratch. So it's creating this connection of energy and so you see that from north to south pole where they're connected inter with through the central sun in the earth through the stargate there and then that connects to the center of the sun the sun that all the planets orbit and that has a stargate and then that connects to the sun that's in a black hole because it's a fallen galaxy of Alcyon in the center of the milky way and then that connects to 11 other systems at 11 other star systems that to their stargates and then those connect to the the supergroup that is composed of 52 they it was originally 54 but they blew two up that's the jokers and the deck of cards why a deck of cards has 52 cards plus two jokers um, that happened in the first flood which was the destruction of the mon empire and the blowing up of quite a few things our outermost planet then the next star system which is nebru uh, composed of Nebru, Helion, Argotus, Argota, not Argota, sorry. They, Argo they must have known at the time of the seeding of this planet that it was necessary for them to conquer the crystal generating power on the Earth since the second cataclysm of Atlantis ultimately resulted in the crystal power generators being destroyed. And I'm wondering also if this was a time that that fall of man programming, because this is something I've been coming super aware of recently, um, especially once I've had some expansive expansion in my consciousness and just deeper connection with the angelics and also studying some more biblical history of things and kind of seeing that. A lot of there's a lot of falsities that have been inserted in terms of the fall that the angels fell. Um, I've been getting more messages that no angels ever fell, and ultimately, um, it everything that has come into creation was already held accountable to its blueprint. So there's like I think there's a huge deception in the fall is in it. It's a huge cap on our consciousness. I almost feel like this is something they they inserted at the time that they blew up those crystal generators and ultimately got full on planetary weapon systems installed into the planet. Once they could invade and hook us up and destabilize that electromagnetic grid field and harvest and just insert with all of the weapon systems. Ultimately, a man humanity doesn't have much to rise up against i mean with these systems because they're so ancient they obviously this information was seeded here prior to the fall of atlantis there must have been a race lineage in specific whether it was the reptilian or draco system that ultimately brought this in i don't really would would you agree that it was the draco system that brought in the expansiveness of the planetary weapon system that's ultimately here well, it's a combination. It's essentially like a syndicate. They call it the Orion Syndicate. So you have the Draco, the Alpha Draco. I want to be clear on that because there's other Draco species that are on the service to the one god of all creation, like the Gamma Draconians, the Ionian Draconians, which an orange man is part of. <laughs> they call him the orange man. <laughs> Kind of like what he really looks like. But anyway, people go, oh, there goes Gene on his crazy stuff again. <laughs> but um, you have this Orion syndicate of the Alpha Draco, the Zedi Reticuli, some of the Mantids, some of the Palladians, uh, of course, the um, 
first real powerhouse of world that they enslaved and conquered through nuclear war, the Anunnaki, which is in, on Helion, Argoda, and Nebiru in the Nemesis star system, the brown dwarf that orbits our sun. Our sun's a trinary system in which there are two suns that orbit it. Nemesis, which orbits um, on a um, little over a 29,000 year cycle. If you take one, the earth rotates on its axis one degree every 72 years, multiply 72 by 360, you get how long it orbits and it causes the precession of the equinox of the earth wobble passing through the constellations known as the zodiac of which they always hide things from you. There are actually 13 signs in the zodiac of Fidgicus being the missing one. There's a period of time for it and they make everything equal. I'm not equal to you. We're all unique. We're all beautiful. We're all flawless crystal structures ourselves, but we're not exactly the same. The zodiac signs are not the same length. They're vastly different in some cases. Scorpio is under 10 days long. Virgo is well over 45 days long. So you've got these systems that they, it's the procession of the equinox actually goes backwards too, because everything goes backwards in a fallen galaxy. Our sun, we rotate around it counterclockwise. We're rotating on our axis counterclockwise. Uh -huh. Rotating around so I mean, the it's just sun. the consciousness itself that it's upholding a total reversal pattern, which why it makes ascending so difficult to maintain or sustain. Yeah, or it's, the timeline. Yeah. Yeah, the whole galaxy is rotating counterclockwise, and it's tilted. If you look at all of the regular galaxies, they're all on planes in relation four levels of a what they call the egg carton universe, because all of the galaxies fall on an egg carton pattern of octahedrons. In other words, crystal structures that are part, if you look at a star tetrahedron within the center of it, you take the points off, you have an octahedron, it's a crystal. And so you have these four layers of crystals of ascension, going through ascension through the galaxies and the regular galaxies rotate clockwise like Andromeda and we're tilted 55 degrees. That's what's known yeah, as the yeah. lockup, where they want the male energy to be in charge of everything, but it doesn't really work that way, and it doesn't work at all. That's why in the Cabal they say follow the wives. If you want to know where the real power lies, it does. It did not lie with Lord Rothschild. You know, it lies with his wife. It lies with. Um, and this is why they, they get so confused in the cabal and they constantly, like the Alpha Draco, any reptilian species can change their sex. Like you saw in Jurassic Park, you don't have enough females or you don't have enough males, they can change over. So the human beings can't do that. So they forcibly change themselves over. If you're born a woman, you become a man. If you're born a man, like Lauren Bacall, you become a woman. You know, the constant, like Big Mike, we see all of these things. It's trying to emulate who they feel are the gods, the gods, the Anunnaki that came to the earth, those that fell from the sky. In other words, they came from off world, from a fallen star system called Nemesis. And they fell down here. They didn't really fall, they landed, but also with them came a whole lot of meteorites coming from two star systems from two planets of a star system known as Scion. It's like Superman, where he came and you got kryptonite coming here. That's very deadly stuff. And this is the black goo Harold Kautz talks about, which is the bad black goo, because they killed the heart of their planetary home systems and using the Metatron lockup system, which they didn't know how to use well at that time, wound up wrenching their apartments into their apartments, their planets into pieces. And so now those pieces have come here and they carry this nasty black goo and they're trying to change over the earth's black goo to the same, it's essentially the blood of the earth into the same kind of thing, but it doesn't work because the earth is in service to the one God of all creation. Mother, yeah, but you know, what but mother. you're referring to with the 55 reversal, I mean, this is technically the, yes, exactly. the, metatronic, the metatronic reversal, the beast machine. Mm -hmm. um, all of the reversal AI, collective mind control programming. And then on this meteorite, this is also what parasitic as well. So it's probably brought the uh, specific metatronic bacteria that was supposed to kind of invade and 
corrupt the organic flower of life inside of the earth? Yes. So, you know, and then of course the, the good side of this, the infinite alliance of free worlds, the guardian alliance, all of this have now showing up at places, some of them so vastly remote, you, that you can't see them as these monolithic structures and Ariel's talking about them. So this is helping the ascension. It's helping get energy in a crystalline structure and they can't find where they all are at. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, let's go in this direction. Okay, so um, yeah, we're talking about all of the negatives right now and like what they've done. Like the the, the 55 Metatronic is like, it's, it's the basis. Uh, I mean, it's the fundamental uh, component of what's housing I guess the the negative uh, fall energy in the planet, but it's also connected to Saturn, all these things. But in opposition to this, we have spiritual planetary defense systems that are actually geared towards defending the earth if ever impending doom or ever impending implosion or ever impending like, like super takeover happens that these things are activated on time cycles. And um, also um, according to um particular bloodlines and races that have the uh, accessibility to go and activate uh the spiritual defense systems have you heard about uh uh rapa nui being one of the spiritual planetary defense systems have you because you said these monolithics it kind of took me to that like uh these are uh considered the guardian of a thousand guardians or the island of a thousand guardians and yes. i guess yeah. Yeah, I'm aware of these. Uh, you know, they used to say there were heads, and now it's. I'm glad you showed it. They're not heads. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was they were buried in sedimentation. That you know shows how long they've been there, because you look at how long it takes to accrete that much material. It shows you how long they were buried, and they are part of the ancient system of the Atlantean Guardian. Or it's not even Atlantean. Excuse me, Lemurian Garden system. So I heard, well, so are you, you're talking about like a different, a different ancient one, or you think this is the same, this is the same one? Like, um, you think, you think there's one spiritual planetary defense systems where all monolithics across the world, no matter where they're buried, would activate to a certain vibration or a certain call? Or do you um, they're think not, they're separate? These, these actually activate a series that are not buried. They're just in interdimensional and now they're coming out of their interdimensional matrix and just showing up all over the place and they don't even know where they all are i think they're forget the exact dimensions like nine feet tall and three or something feet wide of a material they don't know what it is interesting okay um yeah well i know i know you're right when it comes to these planetary spiritual defense systems that I do think these all were seated during after the fall of Mu through the Lemurian um, timeline and I think it came from the original guardians of the earth like those that were 144 human genetic code 12d avatar body they could activate the 12 sound pillars I even heard on Rapa Nui that if you go to the island um, if you sing certain tones, you can actually move the heads, like the heads will move. Like if you have the mm -hmm. activation key codes, you can replace them and organize them. And someday someone will come forward with the particular order and know how to actually move them and activate this whole like spiritual planetary immune system that just like could actually go into the center of the earth and extract all of the evil out of it release the metatronic parasite and the saturn black tesseract cube mechanical spike matrix and i guess it's accessible through through these systems i don't know like i feel like i feel like we're almost uh feeding into like a movie like this could be a movie or something right like how like it sounds like um very um imaginative but also, that is kind of what's happening on a holographic level, though, right? At the same time. Yep. So ten, each one's 10 to 12 feet tall. 
Um, the first one they actually found is in the Utah desert. Um, okay, and where they did it? I can look it up. Yeah. So I think I can pull, it's on Vox that I'm looking on. I can pull the link for you and put it in the chat here, hold on. Oh, is it the, the metal pillar ones that are standing up? Yep. Okay. So I'll put the link in the chat if you want to pull that up. All right. So there's one in California that turned up. There's one in Romania they found that turned up. They're all over the place. They're not finding even a, a, a you know a small percentage of them. They say they're works of art, but they don't see. And some of them they're incredibly remote. I mean, I heard people going putting works of art where nobody's going to find them. <laughs> you know? Interesting. Yeah, that's true. That's interesting. Um. I wonder if I should do something like a remote view on something like this and see if I can try to like trace yeah. energetically. Is it connecting to something inside of the earth? Yep. And you want to um, go look at the interconnection of how they overlie each other in which where they're located and draw the connections between them. And then you'll start to see how they're connected to the Apen systems and all of this and to the Stargate systems. Interesting. So do you think that they're a defense system more so than um, like to, than a weapon human, system? They're here to help the humans. Okay. Yeah, they're here to help, but they're a defensive system and a um, system to destroy the uh, the dark ape and Alpha Draco and Anaki systems. Counterbalance it, counter strike. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have seen these. I haven't looked into them too much, but I definitely will keep it on my right now. I think I think more of these spiritual defense systems are going to keep coming forward because it just makes sense. I mean, ultimately, I do believe that there was more good created in the universe than there was bad. And so there has to be something that aids and assists with what the dark ones are capable of doing technologically wise. Yeah, and in 2001 Space Odyssey, they were showing monoliths showing up on the moon in various locations. So this is all part of this hidden awareness that they give you little glimpses of, but they don't really say much about them. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see here then. I don't see that's the thing. I don't know of any other spiritual defense systems between besides Rafi and Nui. I know there's the Stargate systems, right? There's the 12 planetary defense. I mean, just regular Stargates, 12 dimensional Stargates, um, slash chakra system. But it's kind of like a part of the spiritual immune system. But again, at the same time, um, there's not too many things like other than maybe the pyramid network and then maybe even the sphinx itself could be one of those planetary defense systems because i have heard that the largest feminine vortex sits in front of the sphinx well of course between the, the sphinx pauses the entrance into the uh, library beneath the sphinx and the, the sphinx through the pyramid of giza is tied to the buchegi mountain complex and the sphinx which is much much older there the Sphinx is extremely old. The pyramid is way older than they tell you. It's on the nature of 36,000 plus years old. You can tell because the chamber, the entrance to the chamber of the king frames Sirius on December 22nd through December 25th. It doesn't do that right now. It means you have to have a certain alignment of the orientation of the earth and its, its procession through the equinox. And based on when it does that, you can get the time frames that could have been built when they first had it lock up like that. It isn't when they're telling you, not even close. But you look at the weathering, and I forget there are two gentlemen that went into the weathering on the Sphinx that's right on the edge of my mind. I'm not functioning well with all the stuff going on, but um, that did the weathering on the back of the Sphinx showing that the weathering is water, not wind. 
and which means with water pouring down over the back of the Sphinx and the pyramid being there, it can't have been there when all that weathering happened because you can't get that weather of water flow over the back end of the Sphinx with the pyramid there. So the pyramid wasn't there when the Sphinx got that majority of that water weathering. And so it's like Duval or something. But anyway, that means the Sphinx is far older. It originally, before one of the pharaohs wanted to glorify himself and recarve the head, had the head of a lioness, which if you stood on her bump on the solstice and you look between her ears, you'd see the constellation Leo framed of Leo the lion. And if you look at the layout of the pyramids, not just the three that are on Orion, but all up and down the Nile, they actually fall on the constellation of the overlay, the constellation Leo on the whole Giza plateau, all the way across the entire Nile from the beginning to the end. And the Nile's an amazingly interesting river. There's only a few that flow in an opposite direction compared to all the others, which the Nile does. And so the stars, if you overlay them, the pyramids fall on the constellation Leo along the Nile. And then you look at how the Mississippi River does, and you look at the names of cities along the Mississippi River, it was the Europeans wanted to emulate the Nile. So they named all the cities and they wanted to bring that energy and build structures and removed the pyramids from the Egyptians that put them, that came up into the Colorado River. We're doing the Grand Canyon final part two on deep dives this week, in which we talk about the Egyptians being in the Colorado River and the Colorado Plateau. And you had the Solomon Sea at that time, which was full of water. And they used to have dive shops and things and surfing shops where you could go and rent surfboards and things to go there. And now it's all dry, dried up. You actually have the Missouri River boat up near Barstow buried in the sand. And so all of this huge inner waterways were all over the Western United States and connected all the way up into the Missouri Basin. And you had a series of pyramids. They call them the mound builders. Those weren't mounds, those were pyramids that they built that looked like Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. It's the same people that built Teotihuacan. They built the system of pyramids all along. The Europeans came over and destroyed them all because they wanted to create their own energy, essentially a crystalline structure to rule. You look at what they're saying, you know, they're calling the Native Americans, which are remnants of the Lemurian civilization, and the Atlantean civilization, as heathens. And yet they follow the one God of all creation and they're waiting for the return of the true white brother. In other words, Jesus Christ, who came to the Americas. And so when the conquistadors showed up, they think, oh, well, they're white. They must be the descendants. But they're very far from that. They're not the descendants. They're this bloodlines of Cain that want that serve the dark one. What the uh, Navajo, there's a guy that is talking about the spirit of contention where they don't allow it to fester and get into conflict, like we now see where it's festering and conflict breaks out all over the world. And he talks how that can destroy nations, it can even destroy worlds, which is what they're trying to do. They're trying to say, let's, the French, for example, are saying, let's send boots to the ground in Ukraine. Well, you do that, and now you say that to Russia, you can have your boots, your people literally on our doorstep. If they were going to take over Europe and the Baltic states, they certainly wouldn't take the long way around by going through Ukraine. They are on their doorstep anyway. <laughs> they just go straight in. This is what they do. They project what they're wanting to do on their adversary. So why are they doing this? Because what is in the Baltics and what is these apen systems, these stargates, these portals, all of this stuff? It's a same thing in Crimea. Why are they so hung up on getting Crimea back, which wasn't theirs in the first place? 64 pyramids under the ground there, huge thorium-based reactor systems from the Hyperborean Empire. Yeah. Well, speaking of planetary spiritual defense systems, I think that the pyramid systems all over the world in general are probably the greatest defense system that we have. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, much impossible so to destroy it. 
sorry to interrupt. Sorry, go ahead. So they've so they've been technically hijacked. Some of them have, right? But not all of them have been hijacked. Uh, a majority haven't actually. So that's why they want the Crimean ones. They're buried and they're not hijacked. And they're 64. What is a stable matrix system in a star tetrahedron? 64 tetrahedral matrix. What is the human genome that they're, it's now reactivating? Ariel even talks how it's reactivating DNA strands. The monoliths are, you stand near them, it starts activating dormant strands of DNA. We originally had four balls of 12 strands each, 48, with interconnecting strands for a total of 64 in a star tetrahedral matrix in a spherical realm, because you create, again, the Earth's a sphere, and you create an overlay of 64 star tetrahedral matrix, and you get where all of these things are located all over the world. It's why the Earth can't be flat, because it won't work. Also, if you look at how airlines actually fly, there's a guy that does an amazing set of sequences of all of this, of you know how the uh, Earth is actually. And I've done that on Expanding Earth, and I'm just last night or this morning actually, because I'm a night person, always have been, um, worked on the Hollow Earth Part uh, Two, in which I'm going into how the structure of the earth actually is and this will tie into all, it all ties together everything ties together that's why people go gene does these huge circles and we get lost <laughs> because it all ties together you know i'm sorry about that but that's the way god created it there is no separation of one thing from another and everything's tied together and it's what they want you to do is focus it's like bruce lee used to say look at this and you point and you look at the end of his finger not my finger <laughs> the all the heavenly realms that you are you know yeah. ignoring yes and i just did a show on the heavenly realms actually the seven higher harmonic heavens and how the oversoul in the living is currently we don't realize it but throughout our life is preparing us for death and it the oversoul is going to the heavenly realms, whether you're in your sleep state or maybe meditation state or just your unconscious state, but it does visit and it does go into the heavenly realms for counsel to measure your integrity, your morality, because they say, uh, or I was seeing that it was the angel of death that dictates your moral integral code that keeps the soul mostly good in this life. So it's really interesting how it all works. But um, I want to say, Jean, um, I'm going to be teaching a grid work facilitator two course. Um, I did a grid work facilitator one uh, at the um, end of 2022. Um, and it was amazing. Everybody loved it so much. It was such an amazing course. We really went over just like the basics of what is grid work how to become a facilitator, how to host your own remote sessions, how to do boots on the ground grid work, you know, what are some of the things that you do to actually go on site and location, extract energies out of the land. Um, I'm going to be teaching a second one coming up in the next six to eight weeks. Would you be interested in teaching some classes in this course with me or even being like a guest speaker in the course itself? Guest speaker, I don't think I have time to actually do a class okay. because I have to go back into my uh, Vedic math up to the calculus level where you reduce calculus to algebra, but it's Vedic math and I'd have to pull out my stuff and it's buried. <laughs> so I, it I would guess, uh, yeah, perhaps next like, year. <laughs> you could be um, so and like an incredible, like uh you could put together an incredible course on this stuff like just everything just the vast knowledge like i'm sure you could literally put together curriculum um, i could i feel right now i'm so overwhelmed if it's like thanks for the offer but i'll i'll come on and just talk about like i am doing now kind of just okay. the brains kind of thing so you you would be a guest speaker oh my gosh that's so awesome okay so i'll be in touch then and give you my dates and then um it, I think it would probably need to be on like a topic that would be pertinent to the, the grid work itself on something. But I mean, you have so much like even today, you just brought me the monolith. So I'm going to be diving into this because uh, <laughs> spiritual defense systems is going to be one of the things that we actually talk about in the facilitator two course. And we yep. have it on pre-sale right now. So if anyone wants to sign up, it's at learn.indigoangel222.com and you can pre-register for that course. But I haven't locked in permanent dates yet just because as you can see, I'm still organizing and maybe we're going to have Gene decode in that course. So that would be 
incredible, amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Jean. You're welcome, Indy, anytime. I'll yeah. do what I can to help. <laughs> yeah, well, you're like, you're a really fun person to learn from. You're just so vastly intellectual. And um, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Do you have anything else you want to say to everyone watching? Like, I, I felt like you had some pretty profound messages coming in about just humanity and, and how we should best be serving one another. Yeah, so, you know, you look at the dumps and they lay them out like a crystalline structure where they're, they're laid out on the uh, North American, which is also, of course, South America, but the North American in the Orion and the, you know, they do that also in the constellation Orion and Libra. They also do that over Europe. They also do that over Africa where they represent under the ground star systems and they have these huge nuclear power systems in there and all this other uh, modular nuclear power systems, all kinds of things, even standing wave nuclear power systems, which are scalar, which means faster than the speed of light. So it's affecting backwards and forwards in time, and that ties into Project Pegasus, in which they tried to go back in time and, al and did, and altered the timeline into where we are now, you know, with the Kennedy assassination and all that was part of the reset, and then Lincoln as well which on the original timeline, those things did not happen. We don't have those things occurring, which means we also don't have World War I, we don't have World War II, we don't have Vietnam, Korea, Cambodia, Desert Storm, Ukraine, the Gaza situation now. It's what I'm doing and you know what people can do, which is envisioning. We did the Freedom Envision with 17 platform hosts in 17 languages with 17 females of the BFS, on the 17th of November, when you vedically compress the date, it was 17 again. And so this is the way that people can go and to these ley lines, these locations and envision a, the earth so that we're in service to others and kind and considerate and respectful and loving to each other without all of this jealousy, hatred, anger, frustration and shedding of our personal responsibility for our choices and things we do. We can't sit there and give away our power. Like I'm not responsible, the government or big pharma or this church or that, or this group over here. You need to, people, everyone needs to become personally responsible like the Shaolin Shed said, the basis of the way to be part of the shift to where you shift to the positive, the fourth and fifth density, is based on morality. And the two keys of that are the first and the most important is compassion. That means respect and compassion for others. And then the second one is personal responsibility for your choices, whatever you choose to follow. And whatever that's why it said in the boards, be careful what you follow. You know, so follow what aligns to truth and honesty for you. And if you don't think someone else does, be compassionate and just walk away and go somewhere else. Don't sit there and trash others. For the military, they'll do the tribunals and all this other stuff. We don't need to sit there and trash each other. It's what platform wars looks like. It's what's destroying, the, they're trying to destroy the truth or movement. They said at Davos, they don't control the narrative anymore and they need to figure out how to get it back under control. That is what they figured out. Get these infiltrators in that are making movies and doing all this terrible stuff and attacking each other and get people to be caught up in that like a mob like a, a unruly mob with pitchforks going after the, this monster and that monster when it's none of our business. God will take care of it. And the military is the only way that's going to work to go after this one person who did one something, 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 whatever you think it is. That's take. It's not up to us to do that. The truthers need to do like you're doing, Indy, like I'm doing. Try to do your best and be compassionate, and respectful, help the earth, help each other, and not fall into this spirit of contention. That services the dark one. And we wind up doing that. We become the dark ones. We become the minions of the dark one. When you have hatred and anger and vitriol and pointing fingers, again, no personal responsibility then you give away your power to the dark forces and I, even those that are doing that. I'm, it's unfortunate and 
I pray they wake up to what they're doing, but it is a separation of the two camps, of the wheat from the chaff, and those that want to go to the A line, as they call it, they believe that's the only line. Uh, there is no Nassara. They're going to have a rude awakening. I actually went to my banking facility yesterday to deposit uh, a couple items and re start withdrawing huge amounts of cash and transferring things around and making sure it's Basel III compliant. And she said, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And then I said, yeah, you remember when they had the walls on the floor torn up in here and they're putting those tubes and stuff in? That was for gold and silver coins. She goes, yeah. I said, so you know all about Nasara? She goes, and you were trained on it? Yes, we were. <laughs> Thanks for the verification. <laughs> I'm slipping in there. I go, yeah, and it's happening. So they're going to have a rude awakening when the orange man gets in and the a military does and shows what it's already done and also Nassar rolls out and we see the US dollar and Bitcoin go away because if you're into Bitcoin what are you supporting look at the dark web if you know how to do that or talk to people like SGNon that do all of the childhood trafficking, all of the drugs, all of the gun running, all of that is through Bitcoin. 90% of that is Bitcoin. And it's based on nothing, It just like the US dollar. It does not exist. When the US petrol dollar goes away, so will that. It'll vanish in the blink of an eye. And that was to get the world into CBDC. And we were supposed to be in lockdowns for 19 years and they, Trump rolled it out way before they were ready. That's why they did. And then not only that, the, the mandates, the jab was never mandated. They said it was, it was not. It was voluntary, just like income taxes, it's voluntary. So you're railroaded into what they say, a mandate, which is not a law. A mandate is not a law. It's a voluntary compliance. They make you believe you don't have a choice, but you do. And you're buying into this, giving away your power, giving away your financials, all of this to a whole bunch of people. Well, not a whole bunch, a very small bunch of nasty, psychopathic Satanists that want to have everybody locked down on a central bank digital currency with 15 minute cities and put it a soul trap to where you don't even go outside of a 15 minute range for till the end of time. So this is an ultimate lockdown is what they had planned. And all of that did not come about because the jabs did more than what people think. It allowed, it's the, what is separating the wheat from the chaff. And it's what is causing this. It's causing alignment of how you service to others. Do you blame people for what you chose to do? Or do you take personal responsibility? And in so doing, you know, through the power of the one and only God of all creation, and for me, I'm a Christian, Jesus Christ, you can heal anything. You can, you can and it will come as these grid structures get reactivated. The monolithic systems start reactivating the dormant DNA within us and the we start to ascend to fourth and fifth density and the earth does has already done that the fourth fifth density earth is already in orbit it's seen from the isis space station behind ours when we're in the sunlight on the same side that one is not on the sun because its sun is white in fourth and fifth density where the sun for the this earth is yellow and so it's a g-type star and it's already another one at fourth and fifth density has already ascended as well. The system is ascending. Uh, the question is that you're gonna be personally responsible and be compassionate in service to others and make the shift. And like the Shaolin said, many can't, won't, or don't want to, or don't understand how to do it. So I put together the change along with the BFS of how to do it. It's very simple. Serve others and be kind and compassionate and take personal responsibility and surround yourself with good people that what they do on the majority of every single day is be kind, compassionate and try to do and get the truth out about what's going on in the world and not sit there and point. Even when I go into the big, big, you know, I mentioned a few people in this interview. So more than that with me, because, you know, I've got a, 
a large group of discontents, <laughs> put it that way, that are kind of following me around the globe, I guess, or something like that. So it's um, interesting to say the least. And you know, we the change, I don't know if you've seen that. I put that up on my, uh, I did that on my website. I'm gonna put it up on a rumble. It's by Blade uh, Divide, D-A-V-I-D-E, 144,000. And then there's also Shaolin Monk talking about the shift, which I've been talking about for about five years. Uh, we're pretty much in the midst of that now where the two timelines are completely breaking apart and it's this group of discontent. You know, there's one group of people that are going to be attacking other people and doing, I call it platform wars, where they want to uh, get famous and get a following by attacking other people. And then you have the other group that just want to get the information like yourself out about what's going on for people and without doing that, getting information, researching information, getting things out there help to help the human race and the planet and not sit there and go after individuals. So it's just, it's a separation of the wheat from the chaff. And we're seeing that now and it's taking place um, as actual activities where you see things like the you know the fires in texas and biden even said that if you had the right the right type of roof you'd have been fine <laughs> like it, like in maui right <laughs> blue roofs <laughs> so and then of course we have what's going on in the gaza which is tied to the giza plateau which is tied to stargate 10 which is um fairly near where the Dalai Lama's retreat is uh, on the upper part of India. All of this swath that you, you know, you were saying in your email to me is in the Texas fires and all that are all tied together. It's all part of a, a global system across the globe, including, you know, the uh, Red Sea, the Tigris Euphrates confluence, which most people understand that's where Eden was. All of this is completely part of a whole that is what the deep state is trying to activate, you know, kind of a worldwide weapon to stop the ascension process, essentially, and to lock down the earth. It's their last hurrah. I mean, Nikki Hale, they're, most of their main people are stepping down. You got Victoria Newland stepping down. You had Nikki Haley stepping down. You had uh, Jim Carrey stepping down. You had Lord Rothschild die. You have all of these major players for the cabal stepping down. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to find out Victoria Newland has the C-19 we all know what that means, get mode, all of those things are occurring. And so you see, all, you know, and then they're still trying to fund what's going on in Ukraine, even after Adivka fell. And Nick Victoria Newland went to Ukraine to try to uh, get Zelensky to fire Zelensky. And then after he fired Zelushny, and there's reputed to be a large amount of money that passed hands to the Zelushny, so he'd go off and do his thing. Uh, in the meantime, it looks like he was so dissatisfied that he gave the coordinates of four battalions gathered together a little ways out, all in one location, just outside of Divka, and they hit it with the Skander missiles and took out four battalions in one day, the Russians. And, you know, it's just what's going on is so massive that it's hard to wrap your head around because it's it looks like it's scattered things here there here but you know when you start doing what you're doing indy where you start looking across the globe it's all on the 33rd to the 43rd parallel 44th parallel and you're going whoa the maui fires the texas fires the gaza the giza plateau the Dalai Lama's retreat, um, Stargate 10 is near that area in the Tigris Euphrates area. Then you look at the um, the Apens, you look at the um, the dark work of the dark Apens that they did, the Nebru uh, and the Orphan Nephilim uh, stuff that they did. 
they are connected to the areas where we see these vast disturbances, fires, and all of that. So it's becoming to people like yourself and myself that are aware of the other side of the coin of that, um, how that all looks and you know how it is. Like if you look at the the fires, it's not just that blue roof survives, but like the Texas fires, there's thousands of dead cows and horses, but they can outrun that stuff. How come they couldn't get out of this? And they're just lines of them in Texas. Now, when you're and, talking, can I ask you a question? Yes. When you're talking about Stargate 10, are you talking about the Stargate in Abadan, Iran? Yeah, in the Iran, Iraq, Tigris, Euphrates area, which okay. is part of the Fertile Crescent before they came up into the Gaza, the, the, the Hebrews. They swept up originally from that area, which is from Iran I, and Iraq area, where the Tigris and Euphrates, and there's a river coming out of Iran that comes down there. It's actually a confluence of three rivers. Don't Most people don't notice because the Tigris and Euphrates are so dominant. But it comes, there's another river that comes down from Iran. I've talked about that on previous interviews. Have you looked into... Uh the underwater stargates in um, Aiden, I do believe there are like Orion stargates up through the Red Sea that are supposed to be like underwater passageways in which they would be coming in to access Anunnaki stargate portals that would be in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and that um, ties to, uh, if you look at that, that's coming from the Gulf of Aden, and that's the thing going on with the Houthis. So you got the Houthis that are cutting the fiber optics that go across from Yemen yeah. to um, Djibouti and in it up into Africa, and they're isolating Africa. So, but huge bank transfers and all of that, and all the connections for all of that goes through that area and they've severed already a major portion of that and they're saying if they don't stop doing what they're doing in the gaza they're going to cut the rest and it would cut africa off in the meantime you've got the dollar essentially because of the uh, sanctions it's collapsing i mean it's you know the interview of putin by um, tucker he said you know you don't have something better to do and so you look at this area and what they're doing is they're cutting off the anything that's not Chinese or Russian from going up into the Suez Canal. Also, they're trying to create the uh, Ben Gurion, I believe is what it's called, canal system going through Jerusalem and creating yeah. using nuclear weapons because that's also a vast oil and gas field and they want that massive wealth and the container ships and things the suez is outdated and too it's not wide enough and big enough and deep enough so they want to have this other system which then israel could make a fortune off of and so like you have the thing with the two towers that's also connected to the same thing where they bombed the two towers and they said that's all located in uh man my mind goes blank here and i think they said lebanon but actually it's more in syria the two towers lapse into an area called area 55 which is in syria and it also goes partly into jordan so you have a th a confluence again of a three-way location which is very pivotal just like you do with the Tigris Euphrates and the river coming out of Iran, where you have the three energies of confluence together that creates, you know, the lowest amount of stability to have like a chair is three lakes. You, and it's actually better than four lakes in some way, because even if the lakes aren't the same length, the chair won't rock. Three lakes, it doesn't matter what lengths the legs are, it'll be it may not be flat where the seat is, level and flat, but it will not rock because it's a solid foundation. So you've got all of these many, many, many things tied together. And then if you look at um, a star tetrahedron overlaid on the earth, then that creates a whole nother system. And you know that's where you see like on um, the big red spot, and the big blue spot, for example, on the planets in our system. With Neptune, you have the blue spot and you know all of those things. 
and that's created by the same energy vortex system that the apons the apons fall on those lines. Yeah. But I'm not saying they're pure evil because anybody can come back from from that. All it takes is to start taking personal responsibility, not giving away your power, and starting to be service to others without saying mine, 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 and all of this, and it's your fault, it's their fault, it's never my fault. What you do, your choices are your choices. Don't give away your power anymore. It's very simple. So thank you, Indy. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Gene. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, I hope you guys have a beautiful everything and take care. Thank you. Godspeed. God bless.